feel pretty comfortable with that idea? Good. Yeah, that was the whole idea of that, was take something that might be something that's actually on the internet and think about breaking it up into components and actually make those components and get some practice in doing that. So uh, let's see. What we are going to do, we'll go ahead and just go over the homework. So where we left off, we had just made the header component, right? Let's see, do I have my, I do, I have it running, good. So when we were looking at it yesterday, we made the header component. When I look at this, we have the footer all the way down at the bottom, this little thing that probably doesn't change from page to page. Really, kind of the rest is all the main content. So you could have split it up a variety of ways. And even for experienced programmers, they probably would not come up with the exact same component structure or name. So don't feel bad if you don't didn't do it the exact way that I'm going to do it. Um, but we'll just go ahead and, and break this up some more. So we got the header. I'm kind of thinking everything in this main tag should just be in a main content component. So we'll go ahead and make that. All right, so my first thing is what? Import React and component if you want to. And make the class. And export it. And then we need our render method which will return some JSX. And the JSX we want to return is everything, oops, what was that? Between the main tags, which is a lot of stuff. There we go. All right. And then over here, we want to put our main content in there. And to use it, we need to import it from the file it's in. And theoretically, that should still look exactly the same. And it does. So you can see already, we're getting way more simplified in our main app level. So that's great. Uh, let's go ahead and move the styles for main content over. Because we don't need those in our app CSS anymore. So we already decided these are app level, so those definitely stay. The article is definitely in main content. The avatar. Let's see what else. Article links at the bottom. Yeah, the aside. Because the ad's still part of that. Other articles. Basically everything down to the footer, right? Cut that stuff out of there. <coughs> and paste it in here. Everything looks terrible because import it, right? All right, so we moved it over here. That's honestly not too much better. It's a good starting point. There's still a lot of markup for one component. So let's do a couple subcomponents here. Uh, main thing is probably the article itself, and then the ad, and then we can do the other articles at the bottom. Seem reasonable? The language is what? Oh, this? So I was trying to find a Lord of the Rings Ipsum generator just to like generate gibberish that sounds like Lord of the Rings stuff. But it, I, so that's what it was, but like dwarves don't say condominium, you know? I don't, <laughs> I don't know what the real point of that one was. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that would not work. So, a lot of times, I mean, we could copy and paste other components uh, rather than writing out all these things. But I find that, especially when you are learning a new framework, 
it is helpful to, for a while, not copy and paste too much and actually type it out. So you get a really good muscle memory. Um, where you, you just remember typing it a bunch of times. So that way it's easier to remember how the stuff actually works. So eventually as we get more practice at this, we can do more copy paste of existing components. But for right now, I'm just gonna type them out. So now we're gonna take out everything down to the add and put that in our article. Don't forget the return. Got that. And then back over here in main content, just gonna close app CSS and app JS because we don't need that right now. So we're gonna put article in here. And make sure we import it so we can use it. And then, still work, sure does. Let's put in the CSS for the article. So where do we just move the CSS for the article to? Is it still an app? Nah, man, it's in main content. So we just moved it out of main content. So let's grab all of that stuff. Everything down to uh, the aside, because that's where the ad is. Paste it in there. And then make sure we import it into article. Still works, looking good. It's all making sense so far. Everybody's super familiar with this. Feel pretty confident. Good. And again, just want to stress, if you did not break it up exactly this way, that is perfectly fine. A lot of it is open to interpretation. So what's up next? We did the article. Do the add. Import React. And I'm doing these fairly quickly so we can get to the fun stuff. The render method, the return. Then we'll go grab that content from here. <laughs> Sorry, you look very excited. Did you get it to work? Excellent. We will import our ad. Still works. We'll get the CSS for ad. So that's going to be everything down to not the other articles. Those are the links at the bottom. Add image, add text. There it is. Put that in add CSS and import it into the component. Everything still looks like it should. All right, funner stuff. Let's do these links at the bottom. And then we'll talk about how we can create all four links by mapping over the stuff to make each individual one. So let's first make a component for 
this whole chunk. So this doesn't change, obviously. So we've got a component that kind of wraps the four things. So these are probably going to be a subcomponent of the main one. So let's just make this section and call it whatever. I'm just going to call it other articles since that's what my class names are in the CSS. Let's make a new file. otherarticles.js And for starters, we'll just move all of the content for it over here. So that's going to be everything, basically everything else that's in that main. Which boilerplate? Oh, no, we, we typed all this by hand, other than just copy and pasting the actual markup. So what I was saying earlier about copy-pasting is, you know, usually you'll have tens or possibly even hundreds of components in a good-sized project. So you don't have to hand-type all of the boilerplate setup for like importing React or, you know, things like that, setting up the basic class. A lot of times I'll copy and paste an existing one and then just change the things that are different. But put that in here. <coughs> Import that. Still works. And then let's do the CSS for it. And go back into main content and grab all of that stuff, which is clearly has the other article thing on there. So now we don't have anything in main content anymore. So do we even need that file? Nah, let's get rid of it. So this happens sometimes for sure. You start a project, you make some components, um, and then over time as more stuff gets added to the project or um, you know, you just do refactorings, you may find that some files that you had just aren't really necessary, um, and that's totally fine. It happens. Don't forget to remove the import because that file doesn't exist anymore. And everything looks good-ish. What did I do? Oh, we didn't import it yet. Well, that's what it looks like without that. <laughs> there we go. Cool. So let's look at this markup. So what do you notice about all of this? Anything particularly repetitive? Yeah, so the H2 is different. But then the divs basically just repeat each other a bunch of times, other than there's a few things on them that are different. All the class names on the div are the same. Um, they all have an A tag inside there with an image and a paragraph, but what things are different in them? Image source, the paragraph, and it's kind of hard to see because the image source is pretty long, but also the alt property. So, people who did this successfully, what did you do? <laughs> That's interesting. 
So it was an actual full object. It wasn't an array of objects. That's interesting. I like that approach. Yeah, what'd you do? Oh, you started in site. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Anybody else do it that way? What'd you say? Very realistic. Yeah, it is very realistic. <coughs> so yeah, some good approaches. What we're going to do, normally this is the kind of information that you would get from a backend server. Um, but obviously we don't have a backend for this one, so we're just going to hard code it. Um, We'll just do it as an array of objects that we're just going to put in this file. Let's make one called uh, article data. So I'll make it lowercase. Make an array. And then each object in here is going to contain the information that we need to build one of these. So I already said the things that are different we know that the image source is different. So for this first one, we can put in a property of image source. Grab that. Set that string. We know that the alt is different, right? I think for that first one, it's the orc, right? Yeah. And then what's the last thing that's different? The paragraph, maybe just call it title, title of the link. So it's very common when you're dealing with a, a backend server to get your response as JSON. And so this is kind of simulating the sort of thing you might get back from it. So we're making actual JavaScript objects, but JSON would just be a string that you could easily convert and do the JSON.parse into JavaScript objects. So if we do one of these for each thing, we'll just paste this a few times and then switch out the things that we need. I should have picked shorter URLs. Let's see, the alt on that one is a mountain, right? And there's our caption, or title. Grab the third one. That one, I believe, is the picture of gold, right? Yeah. Grab that title. And last but not least, our Hobbit. Oh, wait. Where am I? There we go. <laughs> And the title for the last one. All right. So if I have this array of all the objects that contain the information I need to know what's different between them, what's my next step? I've got an array of four objects. I need to make four links. How do I do that? All right, so we just want to make one link for each item in an array. So we know if we want to do something for each item in an array, we use map. So down here, we're not going to need all of these anymore. We really just need one, right? So let's get rid of three out of four. 
And then, so now I'm just showing the one. We're going to need to do some JavaScript, right? So I need some curly braces. <clears throat> and then I saved the array as article data. So article data dot map. And then it's going to get an argument of each article, right? And for each one, I want to return this div, right? Let's see what happens. Oh, God. <laughs> it's frightening. So maybe we should not do four pictures of orcs because we'll scare everybody away from our page. Uh, so how do I actually get the right information in here? Yeah, so we have access to this article variable, right? And so if each article is an object, then how do I access this that I need? Just be article.image source, right? So we'll get rid of this guy. That's a weird way to do it that way. Source equals article dot image source, right? There we go. Got our pictures back. All of our titles are still the same, so let's change that next. So that's just going to be article dot title, right? There we go. And then our alt is going to be article.alt. Which you don't see any difference with that. But <laughs> so yeah, basically we just had these objects with the information that was unique to each one. But we knew the markup was going to be the exactly the same for all of them. So if we have an array of things that we want to make identical markup for, we can just map over that array tell it what we want to render, and then have it dynamically input each of the parts that need to change. So right now, you can see if you had a few of these in your markup, this could get pretty ugly. I mean, this is a pretty large amount of JavaScript interpolation. It would be nice if we could make another component, maybe that we could just pass article to. And then we could get all this markup out of there and contain it in another component. That would probably be nice, right? So let's do that. So the first thing I have to tell you is that I lied to you. I know, right? Shocking. This is not the only way to make a React component. So this is like a full React component. It's a full class that inherits from React component. Can have lots of methods, can have state. There is another type of React component, which is a fairly recent addition, where if you don't need any access to state at all, you're really just rendering a bit of UI, you can do what's called a functional stateless component. And rather than a class, you literally just write a function that returns some JSX. So you don't need to do anything other than that. So technically, pretty much every component we've done so far could be written that way. But we wanted to get practice making full components. So but let's try the other type for this one. So what we would like to have happen is rather than this calling or returning a block of HTML, we really want it to just return a component. 
So let's write that, a component that has this JSX. So we can just write a function and we can just call it. So if our main component, our container component is other articles, we'll just call this other article singular. And that will receive some props as arguments. And then it just returns this JSX. So how does that change this? Well, now I can get rid of all that and just say other article. Now our map is nice and tidy. Now the biggest question is, knowing what you know about scoping of JavaScript variables, right now does other article have any idea what article.image source is, right? It doesn't have access to this article variable. So how do we get article passed into here? Did anybody try anything like this on their homework? Yeah, props, which look like HTML attributes, right? So we can just make an attribute article and pass the article in. Now, I realize we're saying article a bunch of times, which can be a bit confusing. Um, but remember, the left side of the prop that you're passing in is what it's going to be called inside the component. And then this side is what the actual thing you're passing in is. So it's very similar to function arguments. When you call a function, you can pass a variable into it. You can pass whatever. But then when you write the function, what it's called within that function is whatever you define it as for the function. So when we do this, now we've passed the article in. React under the hood puts article onto the props object that gets passed, which is why we pass props as an argument here. So the only difference we need here for this to work is that we just put props in front of all of it. So when you pass in something as props, React puts it on the props object as of the same name. So whatever name we put here, so this article name, it will now be props.article from within the component. So theoretically, it should still work, and it does. So that's great. Any questions about any of that? Uh, nothing changes with app.js. We're still entirely within the other articles component. And another thing to note, too, we could have put this in its own file and then imported it into here if we want. Um, but with as small of a function as it is, um, and we're not using it anywhere else at the moment, we just left it as part of this file. Uh, no, because it's in main content. Remember, it's a subcomponent of main content, not app. All right, so that is, what was that? Mega bonus credit? Uh, I'm also going to show you something here that we will use for the rest of the day. <coughs> See this button over here? Anybody use this button yet? So for those of you who haven't, uh, VS Code can actually do get stuff from within the editor. If you click on that, it will show you everything that's changed. And then rather than doing from the command line git add and then git commit dash m to put in a message, you can just put the message here. I'm just going to say finish componentizing, which is not a good commit message. And we did way too much stuff for one commit, but we'll commit more atomically from now on. Most of that was stuff you all did very, very well. So you probably don't need step by step on that. And then just hit the check mark to commit. And then you also can pull, push, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and push that. So that'll be in the, oh, maybe I didn't set it up yet. Hold on. Where is, there we go. So 
So once you do the dash U once, then it'll automatically push to that branch for you. So now I'll be able to use this. But if you run into that issue, that's why. All right. Made the other articles. Uh, not going to bother with the footer. I think, does anybody have any questions about how to componentize the footer? OK, good. <laughs> All right. Let's close some of these things that I don't need anymore. Which I think is pretty much everything other than the article. All right. So who all did the comment box? All right. Yeah. So <laughs> good. Who wants to share a little bit about how they did it? Yeah. Just added a comment section to the comment button. Mm-hmm. Okay, and how did you get it to show only when the button was clicked? Um, I had a method insert that um, uh, when I called with the footer and the call box, that's when they called the component version. Oh, so you actually, how did you do that? That's interesting. <laughs> Did you do anything with state to track? Yeah. Okay. So does that click change something in state? Yeah, I have a state that has the comment feature. Okay, cool. Anybody else do anything different or similar? Pretty similar? Okay. So yeah, basic idea is when we click this button, we want a comment box to show up uh, where we can enter a comment. So... First question is, how do we get something to render conditionally? So if some condition is true, we want to render it. If it's false, we don't want to render it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is keep track of whether that's true or false in state, right? Because we need to know whether we should or should not do that thing. So we need to keep track of that. So to use state, and this is just our buttons down here at the bottom of our article, so we're inside the article component. We're going to have to use a constructor. Don't forget the call to super. And then just initialize state, which is just an object. So what should we call our property that defines whether or not we show comments? Show comments? <laughs> That's a good idea. Let's make it article. We definitely do. Um, so if we show comments on initial page load when, when our constructor runs, should we or should we not show comments? Should not. So show comments should be false then. All right. Now, how in our markup do we get something to conditionally show? Sorry, you want to explain what you did? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I, I created a separate function so that when the comment that you click will go to that function, and then it would check if the comment is already like true or false. And if it was false, it would change it to true. And if it was true, it would change it to false just to check if the comment is true. Mm -hmm. And then how did you get the, so that changes whether show comments is true or false. How did you get it to actually show or not show? And then, so you create the okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if show comments is true, it'll then, like, okay, so I, I saved the new, like, form component to a variable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I call the variable, or the, the object. Okay. 
and then the variable is undefined if it's false. So like you don't assign the variable if it's false. Yeah, yeah so that's one way you can do it. Um, so she's basically saying uh, she put an on-click handler on the button, which would toggle whether show comments is true or false. And then if it is true, she would assign basically what she wanted to render as far as a comment box to a variable and then put that variable in here. If it was not true, if it was false, then that variable just wouldn't get assigned, so it would be undefined, so it wouldn't show anything. Make sense? Kind of. Has anybody used a ternary operator before? A couple people. So it's kind of like a shorthand way to do true or false. So I'll show you one of those. So that's, that's what we'll use here. So right now, first let's talk about, we said we want it to show up here, right below the links, right? So we're just going to go right below this div that contains the links. So we're going to do some JavaScript because we need to do check a conditional. So the way a ternary works is there is the thing you're checking, whether it's true or false, and then a question mark. And then the thing you want to do if it's true, and then a colon, and the thing you want to do if it's false. So in one line, you can do a whole, basically, if else statement. So we're checking if this dot state dot show comments is true. And we do a question mark. And then thing to do if true. And then thing to do if false. So that's basically how it works. So it's just like you're asking the program a question. Do I have this dot state dot show comments? Is that true? Then do this thing. Otherwise, do this thing. So we said, if show comments is true, then we want to show some comments. Otherwise, don't do anything. So this is a shorthand way to do exactly what Sari described. If show comments is true, Render me a paragraph that says comments. Otherwise, just don't do anything. This question mark? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because this is what separates the condition that you're checking for from your true thing to do and your false thing to do. So let's see. Right now, we're false. So we should or should not see anything. Should not. And we don't. What if we change it to true? Ah, now we see comments. So I'm going to do, like I said, I'd start doing shorter commits here. So we'll just say conditionally show comments. Push that up. This is all on the afternoon branch. All right, so that's step one. Next step is we want that to actually change when we push this rather than just hard coding it into state. So a couple people have mentioned that we put an on click handler here, right? So on this button that says comments, which is this one, we're just going to do on click. And then we'll just name the method what it does, which is toggle comments. And then that method doesn't exist yet. So let's go ahead and add it. It's an event handler, so it can receive an event. And let's say we'll just console log something to make sure that it works. So let's give this a shot. Oh, let's set that back to false. <laughs> Open up a console so we can see if it logs. So it did. Excellent. But it also took us back to the top of the page. Anybody know why? Yeah. So these are 
anchor tags, right? And they do have an href property that isn't going anywhere. So an href of hash just takes you back to the top of the page. So if that's the default behavior and we don't want to do the default behavior, prevent default, right? So now we should be able to click it without. And you can see I just get a toggled message every time I do it. Now I did see, they might see this. They might deal with this in their homework. Yeah, what is that about? I didn't know exactly what it was to get rid of it. I just added a prop to it to keep it as it is now. I just put I instead of it. Yep. So remember yesterday when we were talking about how um, React wants, when you do a map, it wants to have a key for each thing that you're rendering. So, and the reason behind that is it tries to be as efficient as possible. So if you have a whole array of things that you're rendering and that array changes, if, you, if it doesn't have a way to keep track of each unique thing, it'll just have to re-render the whole list, which is not very efficient. If it has